So now let's go on to add our game board in here and then some text where we show the app title, the player one, player two, and some images, etc. So let's go back to our form. So let's start by adding the game board, three by three game board. So here we want to look for the toolbox, this one here, toolbox. On my machine, it's actually collapsed. You might want to pin this if you want to just uh, instead of, you know, leaving it auto hide. You do that, it just stays on the left side. And if it's nowhere to be found, usually you have to find it from the, see here toolbox from the view menu. Here's the toolbox. If this was closed, this is closed, this is well. Let's say I can't find it. I go to view toolbox. Now it's back up again. And if you unpin it, then it becomes auto hide. I don't want to, let's just keep it like this for now. Let's start by adding our game board, like I said. First thing, look for a group box. As you can see here, I have a group box. I'm going to carry this and drop it here. And this is just like a border around my game board. And if you want to move it, this thing is tricky. This is where you click to move it. And just make sure it's like kind of in the middle, in the center. And the other thing, I don't like the text group box one. So if we go back to properties window on the right, I want to change the text and just remove the text. Hit enter. Now it doesn't have any text around it. So this is just like a, a border around our game objects. Okay, so what do we use for the items we click on? Some people use buttons. I'm going to actually use a picture box because what we want to draw inside is going to be pictures like bitmaps or PNG files or whatever kind of images. So it's better to use the picture box. So let's go look for one. You scroll down, it's here. Here's my picture box. I'm going to put it here. We're going to make some changes to its properties and then we can copy multiple elements of this. First thing we want to do is make sure it's highlighted. Go to properties. The first thing we want to do, let's call it picture box zero. And I'll explain this in a minute. So the name is picture box zero. That's the first element name. And then scroll down a little bit. The back color, as you can see, I want to make this back color as white. So you can say custom, click on the first one. See now it has a white background. There's multiple options from here, right? You can go to web white. You get the idea. As long as it's the white color, then that's what we want. And then next down, let's see what else we want to change. The cursor. I like to change the mouse cursor so that when I hover on top of this to something like a hand. Hand cursor. Okay, cool. So now it's, it's the hand cursor. So it's not going to show now, but when we run, if I hit Ctrl F5, if I'm here, okay, so now it's turning into a hand, which is nicer. So the other thing that we want to do is give it like a border around. Border style. Yeah, okay, so it's the border style. We can make this fixed single. And that gives it like a nice border around it, okay. So let's continue. We've got the cursor enabled, it's true. Let's just say... Okay, image, not now, location, margin, size. The next thing we want to change is the size. Let's make it 72 by 72. So this is like width and height. Hit enter. This will make it perfect square. That's pretty much it. That's all the properties we want to change on this guy. But now that we change that, I'm going to copy this. Hit Ctrl C on the keyboard or maybe right click on it and say copy. It's the same as Ctrl C. Copy this and then Ctrl V to paste it. And this is going to be our second element. Let's make sure the name that we picked is okay. As you can see, like by default, Visual Studio gave it the name Picture Box 1. So this is 0, Picture Box 0, this is 1. And now let's hit Ctrl V again. This will actually paste another element with the exact same properties and it's called picture box 2. Cool. So now just to speed this up from left to right click on this hold down the control key click on this and click on this and this is basically we're just multi-selecting all three. 
Now I'm going to copy all three by hitting Ctrl C again on the keyboard. And then to paste them in, I have to cl click Ctrl V or hit Ctrl V on the keyboard. So now I have pasted three more. If you look at the names from left to right, they should be, if they're not in the right order, we need to fix that. So this is, this is zero, one, and this is two. Oh, it keeps scrolling like that. I am just going to maximize it a little bit. Okay, and this is what? This is five, four, three. This is not the right order. Actually, I want to move five into here and three into here. Okay, so now we have three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now we want to paste one more time, Control V on the keyboard, and then place them here. Now we can say this is eight, six, seven. Again, it's, I don't know why it's reversed. Let's just fix it. Six here. So basically what we did is the following. This is number zero, number one, number two, number three. This is four, and this is five. Now this is six, seven. Sorry for my handwriting is not the best with the mouse. But this is the idea. The, the ordering is very important because I want to use that in the logic when we look for a winner because we want to compare the elements against each other. So having this order is going to be important for our code logic. So that's the first thing we want to do. It doesn't look like they're actually centered. So to center them, make sure you have the control key down on the keyboard and start clicking on these. That way you can actually move them all together and center them somehow inside the group box. Actually, I think the group box itself needs to be adjusted a little bit. Oh, this is interesting. This guy just pushes them from one side. Why is it doing that? They are children of this guy. So I think I assume that they move with the guy. Okay, so that's another advantage to having the group box. You can see now they're all moving together. Okay, cool. So this looks like it's centered. This is good enough. All right, so now that we successfully drawn the board and have it in the center, let's stop here. And then the next lecture, we'll continue by adding the title for the game and then some captions for player one, player two, etc.